Hi everyone, Ronnie here from IKN. So what we're going to talk to you today about is this importance of establishing proof of protection early on during the, the treatment process and how this concept fits within an assessment and treatment plan. So what we're going to do today is we're going to use the knee as an example to further explain this concept. And one of the things that we speak an awful lot about on our IKN course is, is that when an individual is currently experiencing pain around the knee, for example, okay, we have to recognize that this is an expression that the higher parts of the brain have felt the need to express a top-down form of protection around the knee. Okay, Because we have to also recognize that the, the higher parts of the brain are constantly evaluating and estimating the state of your your system, the state of your tissues, to keep it simple. So to keep it simple again, it's constantly evaluating the state and the capacity of your knee within the context of the entire lower limb to be able to protect itself, to be able to handle stress, handle forces, acting on your system. Because again, the nervous system just worries about keeping you alive. So if the nervous system estimates that your knee or the lower limb as a whole has lost the capacity to be able to handle stress, to be able to protect itself, to protect the tissues locally around the lower limb, then what's going to happen? It's probably going to feel the need to step forward and express a top-down form of protection because it's constantly evaluating whether it's worth, to, it's worth it to express pain, to express excessive muscle activity or excessive tone in a particular area because that's how the nervous system, the higher parts of the nervous system are going to express protection through changes in pain, through increased tone perhaps, increased muscle activity, freezing the degrees of freedom. Because when you're experiencing pain, you don't want an awful lot of movement potential. Because again, you're in a, in a, in a state of threat, you're in a state of protection. But it's not a sustainable form of protection to always have this top-down form of protection through pain. So what we need to do, at least from an IKM perspective, is, is step back and understand, okay, how can I prove to the nervous system through the lower limb and through, through the knee, that we have the capacity through these tissues, through this body region, to protect itself, to protect ourself, right? So that we don't require this top-down form of protection. So we want to essentially create a, a local environment in the knee and, a, and an environment throughout the whole lower limb that reduces the value of pain, that reduces the, the need for top-down protection. That, that's the fundamental thing. So let's say, for example, we have a client come to see us with, with knee pain and we go through our, our local assessment and we, we identify that there's perhaps a, a lack of internal rotation, let's say, at the tibia. Okay? Now, what many might do initially is, okay, we need to improve that local range of motion. Let's, let's do some manual techniques. Let's, let's do some, some local strategies around the need to improve that, that feedback from that area. They're missing tibial internal rotation. So let's get them into tibial internal rotation. All right, let's improve that local feedback. But from our perspective, that's a case of narrowing your focus too soon. All right, we obviously want to respect that there is those local missing, um, those local limiting factors. But we have to understand that, again, the individual is currently experiencing pain. So do you think the nervous system, when, they're, when it's feeling the need to express a top-down form of protection, do you think it's going to be in a position to learn from a local feedback strategy around the knee? Or do you think it wants proof of protection that the actual lower limb and the knee as a whole can handle stress initially? Because what we often see is that when we actually prove to the nervous system that we can handle stress using specific interventions, that we might see that tibial internal rotation improve. Because very often it's, it's, a, it's an expression of that increased tone, that increased muscle activity, that they're lacking those local ranges of motion. So if we improve proof protection first, we may see an improvement in those local feedback focused um, factors from there. But from, a, from a, a treatment standpoint, what we initially want to do is we want to look at the knee within the context of the entire lower limb. Okay, so fundamentally, we don't want to narrow our focus too soon at the knee. We want to look at the entire lower limb first. Okay, so early on, what we want to understand is, can the lower limb as a whole tolerate load without contribution from other top-down tissues? So can the lower limb essentially dissociate from the midline? Can the lower limb express some capacity to handle stress without help, without 
any contribution from the midline tissues, particularly the anti-gravity tissues. So dissociation is the first feature that we want to that we want to prove the nervous system that we have the capacity to express. All right. Then we don't want to jump straight into the knee right after that. But what we want to do then is, is try and deliver some kind of protective feature to the nervous system throughout the lower limb. So we, beyond the fundamental, we have to understand what are the features of the lower limb that actually allow it to protect the tissues of that region without any kind of help from these top-down lines of communication from the higher parts of the brain. So again, we want to move into protective features from there. And one of those is the ability to transmit load from distal to proximal because the foot is ultimately that tissue, that local structure that's in direct contact with your external environment, with the ground. So we want to use certain strategies, specific strategies, strategies to improve that distal to proximal load distribution. Again, it's not going to be a very challenging strategy, but it's the, the specificity of the strategy and the other things that we have the individual do at the same time. That's what's going to make it very, very important and influential from a, from a standpoint of proving protection to the nervous system from the lower limb. Okay? So we move from dissociation first to then establishing, establishing some kind of proof of protection from the lower limb. And then that's when we move into more feedback or local strategies around the knee. Okay, so we're not going to jump straight into the knee first. We're not going to just jump straight into improving the local feedback, which is what we see an awful lot in, in other rehabilitation strategies. Not saying that we're right and they're wrong or, or anyone's right or wrong, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to recognize that the individual is currently experiencing pain. So perhaps they're not in a position to learn from the local feedback strategies. What the nervous system ultimately wants early on is proof of protection. So that's what we want to do early on. Right, and there's many features or many strategies that we can use within a dissociation capacity, within more protective features, many interventions that we can use to establish that proof of protection. And then we can move into feedback and local strategies. But many times, if we improve the dissociation capacity from the lower limb and the midline, and then we improve a protective feature, one of them being the ability to transmit low from distal to proximal, then oftentimes, we might go back and we might recheck the ability of the tibia to internally rotate or go back and check those, those local limiting factors. Now we may find that they improve because, again, we're proving to the nervous system that there's not a need for this top-down protection. So we may see a reduction in the muscle activity that the nervous system is expressing from a top-down perspective. We may see a reduction in, in pain fairly early on from improving this protective feedback to the nervous system. So we're, again, we're just trying to, to create an environment, facilitate an environment where the nervous system doesn't feel the need to express top-down protection. It doesn't mean we don't have to do anything locally at the knee, but it means that the sequence of your rehab is very important. And the sequence, which you would have done prior to treatment, of your assessment is very important to establish these, these features. Can the individual dissociate the lower limb from the midline? And then we can look locally at dissociation capacities as well. Can they express proof of protection from distal to proximal through the lower limb? And then we can go back and we can actually treat, if necessary, these local features. And again, there's many other, there's many other layers to the, to the treatment from there on. But again, early on, it's about what you do first and then what you do next, at least from our perspective, especially when an individual is experiencing pain. Because it's all well and good if you're just trying to improve someone's mobility, if they have lack of internal rotation, for example. But if they're in pain, that changes everything. If they're currently experiencing, or if, they, if their nervous system currently feels a need to express pain or express protection, we have to recognize that and we have to, to alter our, the, the the sequence of our loading strategies. We have to first establish some proof protection before, before working locally, before focusing on feedback focused strategies. All right. So really what we want to do today is, is just highlight this importance of the sequence of your loading strategies, the sequence of your treatment, and not narrow your focus, like we said in many prior videos, too soon. But look at the knee within the context of the entire lower limb. But in today's video, we just wanted to 
to the highlight the need to establish some proof of protection to the nervous system before we start narrowing our focus locally around local segments where an individual is experiencing pain. All right, so it's this, it's, it's this process of widening your focus and narrowing your focus. Because as we move throughout the, the rehab process, it's a matter of moving from local feedback focus strategies to more protective features. But early on, we still need some proof of protection to the nervous system. So the sequence, at least from my perspective, the sequence is key. Because all the exercises, all the treatment strategies, all the manual techniques that can be done are already out there. So it's not like you're going to learn a completely radical new way of, of treating the knee from a, from a technique standpoint. What techniques do we need? But from my perspective, it's the sequence of your, your load delivery is a sequence of how you deliver stimulus, sensory information to the nervous system. That's more important, it's something that we feel is, is very overlooked from an assessment and a treatment standpoint. So again, sequence is everything when you're working with an individual currently experiencing pain, okay? If you'd like to learn more, be sure to check out our blog. We've got lots more information about these types of features, these types of capacities. And if you want to learn more practical strategies, be sure to check out our, uh, our courses as well. Thank you.